Welcome everybody and thank you for watching my video on electric vehicles. I do not plan to make another one on this topic. If you are interested in more, I suggest you subscribe to some of the YouTube channels which I will mention in this video, which have a lot of material on this topic. This video is about the coming, or rather ongoing, revolution which will wipe out cars with internal combustion engines within the next few years. Just the other day, the most recent issue of National Geographic magazine of October 2021 landed in my mailbox and its main topic is exactly this. The revolution is here. The cover shows a Tesla Model 3 or Y in the front. Behind that, what looks like Ford's electric pickup truck F-150 Lightning and behind that Tesla's electric semi-truck. The planes at the top are pure fantasy and the electric bullet train at the left is pointless since trains have been electric already for many decades. The revolution National Geographic writes about in this issue revolves mainly around cars. Before I dive into this topic, let me briefly explain my background in this regard. In the 1980s, I studied chemistry in Germany and majored in electrochemistry, among other things. In early 1989, I started doing research on hydrogen-oxygen fuel cells for my master thesis at the research center of the German battery manufacturer Vata under the aegis of Professor August Winzel, who at that point had been working in this field for more than two decades. My challenge was to help optimize the oxygen electrode for the fuel cells which were to power the onboard system of the European Space Shuttle Hermes, a project that got cancelled a few years later. At the same time, we were trying to make the production process of such electrodes cheaper and faster than what was being used at the time with the aim of developing a fuel cell system for cars. Among other things, we introduced a dry electrode production process very similar to what Tesla is currently introducing into the manufacturing of their new 4680 lithium-ion batteries. When I saw Tesla's footage of their lab-scale production method as shown here, it reminded me of what I was doing back in 1989. Here is a schematic illustration of the calendaring procedure Vata has been using for their lab research since 1979. I put a link to my entire thesis in the description, but be aware that it is in German, so for most of you it won't be of any use. And more to the point, if you want to learn more about Tesla's new batteries, Please visit the YouTube channel The Limiting Factor, which describes in detail the many issues involved in producing batteries for this electric revolution we find ourselves in. Anyway, Vata completely stopped any fuel cell research a short while after I finished my master's thesis there. Back then, which was the age of clunky lead acid and nickel cadmium batteries, slashing fuel cell research seemed like a bad decision, but a few years later, Lithium-ion batteries were developed for the mass market, which today makes few cells for cars look like fuel cells indeed. My interest for electric vehicles never stopped, however, and I have kept a close eye on new developments in the field. For the past few years, the electric vehicle fan community got increasingly loud about announcing the impending demise of the internal combustion engine, ICE engine for short, and the inevitable bankruptcy of old car manufacturers such as General Motors, Ford, Toyota, BMW, and so forth, who are allegedly unwilling or unable to adjust to the new future. Loudest among these doom and gloom messengers are the two YouTube channels Solving the Money Problem and Best in Tesla. For links to their channels, see the description below. Though I enjoy watching most of their videos, I must say that I have a critical mindset and do not easily succumb to mere talk, in particular when it comes from overly enthusiastic Tesla fanboys, as these two undoubtedly are. Don't get me wrong, I own Tesla shares myself and on occasion annoy my family and friends with my own Tesla enthusiasm. Still, I want to see hard data to back up these claims of an impending doom of the old ice car industry, and this is what this video is going to provide. A few days ago, I stumbled over a very concrete set of data points. Ice car sales statistics for Norway, the country in the world where the adoption of electric vehicles has progressed the most. This chart shows that ice car sales will go pretty much down to zero in Norway by April of next year. I track this chart down to its source. Here is an article by the electric vehicle website Electrek, which features that chart further below, taken originally from this Norwegian website. Again. All the links to these and all the other websites that are used as sources can be found in the description below. A more recent update on car sales in Norway confirms this. 
In September of 2021, more than 90% of all cars were EVs, 77.5% of them pure battery electric, and some 14% plug-in hybrids. It is therefore official that there will be basically no more ICE car sales in Norway starting sometime next year, that is in 2022, simply because no one wants them anymore. But what does that mean for the rest of the world? After all, Norway is a small country, and its development in this regard is absolutely not representative. Or is it? To answer this, I searched the internet for data on the development of EV sales in other countries. I found two websites which seem to have reliable data on a number of decisive countries. An article of August 2, 2021 on cleantechnica.com for many European countries, and an undated article of sometime in 2021 on the website of the International Energy Agency for the US, Sweden, China, France, and a few other countries. This Excel spreadsheet shows the data I've extracted from these two websites. It shows the market share in new car sales of EVs, meaning battery electric and hybrids, for 15 countries, with a first data point for each country chosen when that market share reached 1%. This gives us a basis that allows us to compare the development in each country. The market share values for 2021 given in red are tentative values for different reasons for each article. First, the 2021 data from the Clean Technica websites are average data only covering the first seven months of 2021. Since EV sales keep increasing pretty much everywhere throughout each year, the EV market share is usually considerably higher during the second half of each year. Case in point here is Norway, which Clean Technica lists at 81% for 2021, but as we have just seen, that value reached more than 90% already in September of that year. Therefore, the Clean Technica data for 2021 are probably a little bit too low. The International Energy Agency's webpage lists no data for 2021 at all. The 2021 data listed here for the US, Sweden, China and France were taken from other internet sources giving more up-to-date market shares for a single month in the middle of the year, assuming that those are close to what the average value will be for all 12 months of that year. On the very left of that spreadsheet is listed the number of years that have gone by after the year when the 1% mark was reached in each country. This is what we will use for the values of our x-axis, the time axis in our chart. It shows years after having reached 1% of market share. Plotting the market share values along the y-axis, we receive the following chart with 15 graphs, one for each country. First, note that the individual graphs for many countries based on the Clean Technica article flatten out a little at the end, hence for the 2021 data point, exactly because these values are probably too low as they cover market share values only for the first half of that year. If we were to correct this, the individual graphs would probably be close to linear at the end. I will now briefly discuss these graphs with the aim to find out when each country in our chart will reach the same level of EV adoption as Norway will have next year. In other words, we are looking for the year when there will be most likely no ice car sales anymore in each of these countries. Spoiler alert, I've entered the results of this into the small table to the right. I will now go through each country listed in that table. First, there is of course Norway, which will reach that point next year as we have seen. That's a no-brainer. It took Norway 12 years to get from 1% EV market share to basically 100%. This is our benchmark. Next, we have Iceland, which is trailing behind Norway, but already after 8 years, it has the same level of EV adoption which Norway only reached after a little over 9 years. Therefore, Iceland will probably have 100% EV shares after not even 11 years after having reached 1%, which was in 2013, so that means that Iceland hits 100% probably in 2024 at the latest. Sweden started sluggishly, but has recently overtaken Norway in adoption speed and will hit the 100% mark a little earlier than after 12 years. This brings it probably to the second half of 2025. Denmark is next in line, which has the steepest rise of all countries and might hit the 100% mark after just 10 years, hence probably already in 2027. While you might dismiss these relatively small northern European countries as hardly relevant, the next country in line is a big fish. Germany. It is the third largest manufacturer of ICE cars after the US and Japan and also among the larger car markets in the world. 
Its trajectory runs almost identical to that of Norway and is therefore slated to hit 100% EV adoption 12 years after it had reached 1%, which was in 2016, so 100% adoption will probably happen in 2028. That is just seven years from now. The trajectories of France and Austria are also going parallel to that of Norway, although they had a slow start, so they are a couple of years behind, presumably hitting 100% in 2029. The next draw on my table has three big fish in them, China, Italy and the UK, but also Belgium. China's development, which reached 1% in 2015, is now rising at a similar slope as that of Norway, though some three years delayed. 15 years plus 2015 gives us the year 2030 for full adoption. Italy is way behind in general, but considering that it reached 1% only in 2019, it has shown the steepest rise of all countries in its first three years. Giving it 11 years until 2030 for full adoption may therefore be on the high side. It may well be that Italy overtakes even Denmark and finishes its 100% in just nine years, meaning already in 2028 together with Germany. We will see whether the initial strong growth can be maintained though. Being cautious with my estimate, I have Italy at 12 years only, hence 2030 for full EV adoption. Belgium and the UK had somewhat flatter curves than that of China and France, but we must keep in mind that the data for 2021 were taken from the Clean Technica website, hence are too low, whereas those for France and China are mid-year values. More realistic 2021 values for the UK and Belgium would probably put those two countries on a similar slope as China and France. In addition, EV vehicle sales in the UK probably will go through the roof for the last three months of the year because the UK is currently going through a major economic crisis caused mainly by Britain's exit from the European Union, which, among other things, has led to massive gasoline supply bottlenecks. As a result, internet searches for EVs have skyrocketed by 1,600% as the website Inside EVs reported. This shows that more and more people understand that range anxiety is much more an issue for the owners of gas vehicles these days than it is for the owners of EVs. Nowadays, disrupting an increasingly decentralized electric grid is much more difficult than disrupting the supply of gasoline, either by OPEC failing to deliver, a refinery going offline after a hurricane, as happens in the US on occasion, or a nation's tanker motor pool getting grounded for whatever reason, as is currently the case in the UK. It really is extremely comforting to know that all you need to do to refuel your car is to plug it in. Predicting the timeline for 100% EV adoption for the remaining countries in our list is more of a challenge, because they all still have rather low percentages. However, I think we can recognize a pattern in the 15 datasets. Once that EV adoption rate has reached some 4%, even in countries where adoption has been slow before that, the adoption rate then suddenly picks up considerably, bringing it up to the slope similar to that of Norway and the other early adopters. The reason for that, I think, is twofold – supply and demand. At a sales rate of some 4%, give or take 1% point, EV penetration into a given population has reached a depth where almost everyone knows someone who owns an EV. They hear their acquaintance, friend or family member rave about how great EVs are, superior in almost every regard to ICE vehicles. That inevitably leads to a spike in demand, and that increased demand makes it attractive for many more car manufacturers to actually produce and offer new EV models for sale. At that point, the market gets into a positive feedback loop with no way of stopping it. This leads to an expected 100% adoption rate for Spain and Greece in 2031, and for the US, which will reach this pivotal point of 4% EV adoption rate sometime later this year or early next year, 100% should be reached by 2032. The same is true for Canada and Korea, whose data I did not include here because they are very similar to that of the US and it would merely clutter our chart. The same is true for Australia, but with one year delay. The only country completely left out here that is relevant is Japan, because to this day, Japan has not even reached an EV adoption rate of 1%, actually not even half a percent. All bets are off when it comes to this underdeveloped country. 
One outlier here are the Netherlands, whose adoption curve meanders all over the place. The reason for this is that until 2016, the Dutch government heavily incentivized the sale of plug-in hybrids, leading to almost all EVs sold up to this point being plug-in hybrids. In 2016, that incentive was withdrawn, as a result of which almost only battery-only EVs were left, rising steeply over the next years. In 2021, the incentive scheme changed again, and so did EV sales. What we see here is therefore mainly the result of the Dutch government messing with the free market. Totally, EV sales in August of 2021 were at 30%, and for the rest of the year I expect it to be even higher than that, so the Dutch are now on the same trajectory as everyone else in Europe, slated to reach 100% by maybe 2028 together with Germany. Anyway, by 2030, only small remnants of the former worldwide ice car market will still exist in industrialized countries, and by 2032, all of it will be history. If Japan still produces ice vehicles by the millions, then they'll have to sell it to developing countries at discount prices, while at the same time not being able to produce them at those prices, as their much smaller production volume increases the costs per vehicle dramatically. But what does all this prove about claims that the traditional automakers won't survive this transition? Let's look at what these automakers plan on doing. The International Energy Agency has collected statements from these companies as to their EV adoption plans up to 2030. The only company that plans on converting 100% to EVs by 2030 is Volvo. All the rest of them, as far as any percentage figures are given, merely indicate that their overall production volume will shrink. For example, Daimler says that 50% of all its vehicles will be electric by 2030, but no one will buy the other 50% anymore, so Daimler loses 50% of its sales volume. No company can survive such a collapse of sales. Well, Daimler's executives must have figured that out themselves, so more recently they changed their goal. Their website now states that they strive to have 50% conversion by 2025, up from 25% before. General Motors even plans on reducing its car sales from currently some 7 million down to only 1 million. Mazda wants to sell only 5% electric vehicles in 2030. In other words, they will sell nothing anymore because they will be out of business. In Germany, EV sales have exceeded 20% in 2021, and VW plans on selling only 20% of them in 2025, at which point EV sales in Germany are expected to amount to some 60%. What are they thinking? Actually, they know they are in trouble, as a recent paper in the Business Insider states, explaining that Tesla's new upcoming factory in Germany threatens to destroy VW. Here is an article of Cars and Drivers from June 2021 with some more EV production goals by various ICE car makers. By 2030, when the game is almost over, Kia, Mitsubishi and Subaru want to sell some 40 to 50% EVs. The rest they won't be able to sell anymore at that point, at least not with a profit. VW is at 60%, which is an average of the two values listed on the chart we've just seen. Again, there won't be a market for the other 40% anymore. Germany will be 100% electrified by 2028, two years earlier. And now the utmost ridiculous. General Motors wants to have their pickup trucks electrified by 2035, three years after the US has gone fully electric. And the rest of their fleet will be all electric by 2040. So they are planning to produce for eight long years millions of vehicles that no one will want to buy anymore. How crazy is that? And here's the climax of industrial stupidity made in Japan. They plan on producing ICE cars until 2050, hence for 18 years with no market to buy them. If you think that such morons only exist on Japan's executive floors, think again. Here is Ford's plan, fully electric by 2050. And here is Toyota, who think that in 2030 they can sell 85% of their vehicles to Americans, which still have tailpipes. That includes hybrids, of course, but they will be on the way out by then, as they are far inferior to battery electric vehicles. Here is a chart that shows the expected growth of the EV market share in the US up to 2030, according to the website evadoption.com. This would make it by far the slowest EV adoption of all the countries we have data from. I don't know what these people have been smoking. 
This is an insult to the average US consumer, basically claiming that they will keep buying garbage by the tens of millions when something far better can be had soon. Here is the reality check. The market leader in EVs, Tesla, has their two mass market models sold out until April next year at the time of making this video, which is early October 2021. That's half a year of sales, which in the US currently stand at roughly 60,000 for the Model 3 and 90,000 for the Model Y. So all in all, 150,000 cars already ordered and paid and waiting to be delivered. And this in spite of the fact that these cars aren't cheap at all. But everybody wants a Tesla. It's no different anywhere else we look. Take the startup company Rivian. In early October 2021, they filed their paperwork to become a publicly traded company, and in that process, they revealed that they have almost 50,000 pre-orders for their pickup truck R1T, which just started production, and their SUV R1S, which is supposed to enter production in December of 2021. It will probably take them a year or more to satisfy this demand. Ford will start delivering their new electric pickup truck F-150 Lightning starting next year, yet with a production goal of only 80,000 trucks a year, it will take them almost two years just to catch up with the more than 130,000 pre-orders they have received so far. Even worse, or better, depending on how you look at it, is the situation with Tesla's Cybertruck, which has so far amassed a whopping one and a quarter million pre-orders, and they keep coming in. With production slated to start later in 2022, it will take Tesla years to catch up with this demand. Or take the first electric vehicle Cadillac announced, the Lyric. When they opened reservations for the limited debut edition, it was sold out within 19 minutes. The headline here tells it all. Automakers indeed still vastly underestimate the demand for electric vehicles. Therefore, the market share of EVs in the US isn't so low compared to other countries because consumers aren't interested. Quite to the contrary. They are desperate to get their hands on EVs. It's the limited supply which constrains the growth of that sector. But once Tesla's new Gigafactory in Austin, Texas goes online later this year and ramps up production of Model Ys and the Cybertruck, EVs market share will start going through the roof in the US. If Ford, Chrysler and General Motors don't follow quickly by ramping up their EV production drastically to what consumers want, they will simply be left behind in the dust. Consumers will buy EVs from whoever offers them. And that brings me to the last aspect of this revolution, the impending invasion of the world's car markets by Chinese EV manufacturers such as BYD, Xpeng and Neo. Chinese EV companies are not just coming to Europe and to Australia. They are also poised to invade the United States with their cheap electric vehicles, and that is actually the only corner from which Tesla really has to fear competition. If you want to learn more about this impending ultimate Chinese onslaught onto one of the last strongholds of US mass product manufacturing, watch the excellently researched videos by the Electric Viking, an Australian with sympathies for Western manufacturers but not a fanboy of anyone. Trailing after almost the entire rest of the industrialized world, by 2032, 100% of all US consumers also want affordable, safe, clean, quiet, fast, low maintenance electric vehicles, and no more expensive, unsafe, dirty, stinking, loud, lame, explosive, high maintenance ice cars. The US consumers demand will be met just maybe not by old-fashioned US companies such as Chrysler, General Motors and Ford. Oh, and one last note to all those who still own a nice vehicle. As experiences in Norway show, a few years before your country gets close to 100% EV adoption, sales prices for used ICE cars will collapse as no one wants them anymore. These fossil fuel burning fossils of the ice age will soon be worth only the value of their scrap metal. Don't miss the point of getting rid of your Ice Age fossil before it becomes worthless. On that note, I'll let you all go. Thank you for watching.